So neuromyelitis optica is an inflammatory uh, CNS uh, disorder. Um, it's actually caused by an antibody that targets the water channel. And it's uh, characterized by recurrent episodes of inflammation of the optic nerve or the spinal cord or an area at the back of the brain called the area of the streamer. And the symptoms are of optic neuritis, for example, uh, blurring or painful vision uh, loss uh, for the spinal cord, uh, transverse myelitis, uh, where patients will become weak or numb or lose bladder or bowel control. And uh, for the area of postrema at the back of the brain, intractable nausea and vomiting. So people get recurrent episodes of these types of symptoms, and it's due to this antibody that's targeting a water channel that sits on an, the brain cell called the astrocyte. NMOSD used to be misdiagnosed commonly as multiple sclerosis, but we now know that NMOSD and MS are very separate or different diseases. NMOSD causes a significant amount of disability, and it causes disability via the clinical attacks that occur. So the disability is attack-related. This is different to MS because in MS, uh, disability generally accrues as part of the progressive phase of the illness rather than due to the actual relapses. So in order to have an impact on the disease in NMOSD, we've got to stop the attacks. And uh, 2019 saw the results come out of three randomized controlled trials of three different drugs, and all of them were positive. All of them showed benefit. And this has been a significant step in the right direction for the treatment of NMOSD uh, because we now have drugs that significantly impact uh, disability through prevention of clinical relapses. Since the discovery of the water channel antibody at Mayo Clinic in 2004, uh, we and others internationally have worked to try and understand the mechanisms of the disease. And it turns out that one of the major central core mechanisms of injury in NMOSD is that the antibody, when it binds to the water channel on the astrocyte, activates a substance called complement. And complement is a very uh, uh, um, toxic substance that uh, basically uh, lesions the cell membrane and kill, kill the astrocyte, but also activates a lot of inflammatory proteins and inflammatory cells. And these can have devastating effects in patients with NMOSD. So it made sense to us that if you could block the activation of complement, maybe we could stop the attacks in NMOSD. And that was the thinking behind why we uh, did the open-label trial initially, and then because of significantly beneficial results and impressive results, moved to a phase three trial that was completed in 2019 and showed, I think, quite dramatic impact in terms of relapse rate reduction. So the aim of the PREVENT study was essentially to see if we could stop or significantly reduce the rate of clinical attacks in patients uh, with NMOSD. So all the patients in this trial had aquaporin-4 antibodies. Uh, they were all over the age of 18, and they were randomized in a two-to-one fashion. They were allowed to actually receive maintenance standard of care immunosuppression. So they could have what we call ISTs on board. And then they were randomized to getting eculizumab versus a placebo on top of that. And what they found was, was that the drug actually had a 94% risk reduction in terms of the likelihood of having a clinical attack compared with placebo, which was a dramatic uh, benefit. They also showed that it reduced the annual, annualized relapse rate. And then it did have benefits in terms of disability outcomes but those benefits were not statistically significant. The major efficacy findings were this quite impressive uh, reduction in the likelihood of having a clinical attack with the drug. 
Um, the drug is actually uh, relatively safe, uh, which is good news for people with NMOSD. Uh, to tell you a few things about it, first of all, eculizumab is a drug that's been used in children with a disease called PNH, and those children are on eculizumab lifelong and do very well on the medication. Uh, the medication has to be given every two weeks. It's an infusion. The biggest risk with eculizumab, or the biggest concern, uh, is relating to infections with meningococcal uh, infection or um, encapsulated bacterial infection. And all patients getting eculizumab must have uh, meningococcal uh, uh, vaccination. Uh, in fact, in the study, in the PREVENT study, there were no cases of meningococcal uh, meningitis or meningococcal infection, but it is a risk, and patients, uh, if they are not vaccinated, must be on uh, um, antibiotic prophylaxis. Uh, other than that, uh, the uh, safety profile was very good. In fact, uh, adverse events were similar uh, in both the placebo and the eculizumab uh, group. Many physicians ask me, uh, what about using eculizumab as a monotherapy? In other words, just on its own. And in fact, in my practice, uh, when I prescribe eculizumab, I use it as a monotherapy. But what is the data to support that? Well, first of all, in the open label trial, we were using eculizumab as monotherapy and we found dramatic results in that trial. But we also did a subgroup analysis in the PREVENT trial because actually 24% of the patients enrolled in the PREVENT trial were actually only treated with eculizumab or placebo. And so we were able to do a subgroup analysis and we found some, I think, quite impressive uh, results. Firstly, at uh, 96 weeks, 100% of the eculizumab monotherapy group were relapse-free uh, compared to 40.4% of the placebo group. So that was quite a difference. And also in terms of disability, 38.5% of patients in the placebo group had worsening EDSS versus 4.8% uh, of the eculizumab treated group. And also there seemed to be a reduction, obviously because there were no attacks in the likelihood of hospitalizations, et cetera. So overall, uh, though uh, this likely did not re reach statistical significance, the indications are that monotherapy uh, does work uh, and I certainly personally feel comfortable using monotherapy uh, in patients with NMOSD.